Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the series. This video I'm going to go over um, using equipment and scrolls and also to talk about horde battle a bit since those are some topics I haven't covered previously. So one thing I want to mention about the equipment. I'm just going to go to equipment. So you see how there's a green bar around these and then these are still gray. So when you're first adding equipment to your advisors, it goes all the way up to plus 50. And then there's like a point where you have to invest a whole bunch to break it into the green quality. So you see how I'm putting a bunch in, and once you fill up this bar, it goes all the way to 1,000, and you, you'll you be able to hit confirm and then upgrade it. It'll upgrade to the next tier, and then you'll be able to keep upgrading it as green. And the green tier is twice as difficult to upgrade. So I don't think it's really worthwhile to break very many um, of your advisors into the green tier while you have others still in gray tier. What I chose to do is I'm going to do my top three into green tier and a few stats, like in this stat, this one for this guy because it's his primary stat. Uh, the reason why I'm okay with breaking this one in is because that is not a stat that affects the strength of your villages. And I kind of want to get at least all of my guys who are currently running a village, which is quite a few of these. Uh, here's one for example. He still has equipment that can be upgraded, and he's running a village. And so these are going to make his village give more income. So I want to get all these up at least to plus 50 before I start... Uh, breaking through on, on those. This stat doesn't really matter because these guys running villages are so weak compared to my other advisors that they're essentially useless in the stat, so I'm okay with leaving that at zero. I'm just increasing these so that they'll have more income in the villages. So right now I've got Hanjo's stat broken up there, it's in the green, and Chilon, I've got two of his stats broken up. This one only because he's got so many percentage modifiers on it. So that's kind of the logic behind using up equipment. Um, for the most part, you want to get everything to gray tier, at least in the people who are running your villages. And then you can start pushing things up into the green tier on your top advisors. And there's tiers even higher than green. That's that's going to be much later in the game, so it'll be a while before I get there. Another thing I'll talk about is the scrolls. So, scrolls for your advisors. So what I do is... For the green tier, I get everybody who's in a collection that I care about at all, at least up to three stars for green, just for the collection bonus. And then any excess scrolls that are left over after they get to that level, or if they're in a collection that I don't care about, I'll combine them up to the blue level. And then for the blue level, same logic. Anybody that's in a collection I care about, I aim to give them three stars. Or if they're in a collection I don't care about, or if they're already at three stars, then I'll combine those scrolls up to the next tier. Like this, if you've never done it before. So that's kind of the logic behind how I use up scrolls. And then I'm going to talk about horde battle for a bit. Now, if you're if you're not in a horde that's high enough rank to be in horde battle, the rest of this episode will probably be kind of useless for you. So you can go ahead and stop there if you're not interested. So horde battle has got a lot of buttons, and it can be a bit confusing at first. Here's the horde store button. This is where you're going to be able to spend the gems that you'll accumulate. Um, definitely the elites are a good thing to buy. No more purchases allowed. Oh, I used up that one already. Okay. And um, the stamina supply is also great, but it only unlocks after you've gotten enough battle gems. This is where you draft. You want to make sure that you're drafting whenever you can be. This is where your chests get kept. If you have keys for them, you can unlock them. Uh, the most important thing, though, is going into here, where you hit enter. This will show you the rankings. Uh, right now we're top ranked, but that won't last long. Uh, the reason why I know it won't last long is because we've been losing a little bit of ground to greatness. You can actually click on the area. They'll show you. They're earning 38 per minute, and we are earning 32 per minute. So that means even though we're rank 1 right now, we're soon to be eclipsed by greatness, who we've been fighting with. So we're probably going to get second or third in this battle, based on my personal projections. Um... I want to show you a few buttons. This button shows you a bigger view of the map. So over here we've got ye yellow, and we kind of early game decided to make kind of a peace treaty with yellow. It's always good to reach out to the other horde leaders if you can. If you reach out to them, not only can you possibly negotiate treaties, but you can also click on their profile and check how strong they are, which lets you know who you don't want to tangle with and who you might be able to tangle with. Uh, the horde leader isn't always a good representation of their horde, but oftentimes the horde leader will be one of the strongest members. So you can usually get a good idea by talking to them about how strong they might be. So early on we negotiated a treaty here. We started pushing out to this side instead. 
Um, it's always good to push up close to the middle early if you can and then take anything along your line to the middle. You want to have access to the middle if you can and you want to take as many forts as you can on your way to the middle. Now unfortunately there was a guy who spends a lot of money in this horde over here and once we started fighting with him he just kind of single-handedly with his own army defeated our entire horde. He's a big money spender. And so we're in the situation where we cannot fight here at all because there's just a hopeless power difference. And we kind of made a treaty here, so we're sort of honor bound not to interfere there too much. So we're kind of stuck here. We can't get into the middle. Uh, what we could do, we've got like two options. We could we could break our treaty and try to fight these guys if they're weaker, but we don't even know for sure if we could win that, and it would be kind of a dirty move. Or two, what we can do is we can wait until the guy on this side breaks into the middle and starts fighting with all the other players, and then while he's distracted, we'll try to retake this. Uh, maybe we'll try to snipe that. So it's kind of a game where you have to tactically uh, figure out what you can achieve, make alliances with who you can, pick your battles, and don't overextend yourself, but at the same time, take as much as you can. And so it's quite interesting in that way. Now I'll show you some of the different things that you can do on the map. So when you're taking an unowned square, you're not fighting against another player, and it always takes energy to take squares. You press the Occupy button to take the square. I don't want to do that. It costs stamina, which I don't want to use. You can see the info, gives you a lot of different info on what the land is worth. Um, generally, what we try to do in the early game is first, we got our path up to here secured. We made a treaty here, like I was saying. And then we started taking any of the good quality lands, like the level 4 lands. They give the most status. We would pick up any level 4 lands that were easy to pick up. There's a whole bunch here that we grabbed, and we split out down there to grab some of these level 3 lands. So grabbing rich quality lands rather than fighting with other players can be good. If you're able to fight and beat other players, that will give you even more score, but it will also drain your reserves of soldiers and stamina to use. See, our plan right now, we were holding on to a lot of this and this before, before this guy just came in and single-handedly killed us with his money bags. But our plan right now to get back at him is we're just going to wait until the level 3-4 unlocks later today. And then we're going to attack corner-wise up through here after he's exhausted himself fighting others. So that's our game plan right now. We're just kind of biding our time. We're not really strong enough to win in an all-out war. We've conceded a lot of territory to him, and we're just going to kind of wait until we can make this offensive. Um, so rallying. Rallying is something that you can do to like combine a bunch of different armies together to attack. Um, you have a limited number of rallies so that you can buy more, and you kind of want to reserve your rallies for really important attacks, like if you're going to attack a level 2 or level 1 fort, um, because when you use the rally flag, you can get a bunch of other people to join into it. Like, for example, I can add myself to this guy's rally. Uh, I don't really have the, the troops right now to get involved in whatever he's doing. As a matter of fact, I think it's a bad idea. There's not much coordination within our horde, just everybody kind of doing their own thing, which is unfortunate, but I'm not the horde leader, so I'm not really the one setting the agenda. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of wasting that rally. You want to, if possible, use your rallies to take really high value targets and then pile on as many people at once. Uh, this is kind of a game where tactics does matter. If you attack a really heavily uh, defended area with only a small number of troops, all those troops will be wasted because You'll take losses proportionate to how much you outnumber or don't outnumber the enemy. Meaning, if you get into a battle with a really huge enemy army with a small one, you just basically threw all those troops in the garbage. Meanwhile, if you take over a really weak enemy with a really large army, you're going to take almost no losses. So it's really bad to fight outnumbered in strength. It's, it's really good to fight outnumbering the enemy in strength. And that is why the rallies are so strong, is because you can build up a much stronger attack and attack a lot more efficiently to compete with them. In addition, the rally only takes one stamina, although it does take a, a rally flag, and attacking in any way on a square that you don't currently occupy also takes one stamina. So if you're using the rally flags, you can launch a really powerful attack for stamina, one stamina. Meanwhile, weaker attacks also take one stamina. Uh, one thing that does not require stamina resource is to garrison somewhere. That you can do completely without any resources. And what garrison, garrison does is it moves your army onto a square you already occupy and allows it to defend there. So garrisoning can be used at choke points to really effectively hold off the enemies. Like here, for example, we pooled our whole army into this area to try to hold him off at this choke point, and it didn't matter. He walked in with just his horde leader, nothing else, and basically beat our entire team. So playing tactically isn't really going to make you win if you're fighting against someone who's way stronger than you and spending way more money than you, but 
If you're playing tactically against someone who's close to you in strength, you'll be able to easily beat them. Basically what you want to do is try to bait them into attacking areas where they're not strong enough to take. Like for example, if you piled all your defenses into here and managed to bait them into attacking it one by one, you would just slaughter the whole army. And likewise, another good thing to do is to snipe forts. Like once this gets down to really low health, it might be a good idea for us to punch up through here and then finish it off ourselves so we get the bonus for taking it, even though red would have done most of the work. If we get the last hit in, we'll get the bonus for taking it first. And then red would quickly take it back from us because he's so much stronger, but still, even sniping the bonus from him would be a huge win for us at this point because we're so much weaker. You gotta take what you can get when you're weaker. Uh, report area. This will show you what's been happening lately. Just This is the horde leader guy that I was talking about with his massive army just walking through and taking all our land. We tried to fight him, but we just weren't strong enough. Even if we tried to play tactically, he just rolled right over us. So that's unfortunate. If you have any one battles in here, you can press read all to collect the rewards. We have no rewards collectible right now. This is the button for collecting the passive income you get for defending areas. It's good to garrison areas you own because that will give you a little bit of additional income. Press it to collect. Um, that's pretty much all I guess I want to say about board battle for now. Um, it's enjoyable, but don't take it too seriously because inevitably you're going to run into somebody that's just so much stronger than you that no matter what you do, you can't really fight them very effectively. But have fun trying to, you know, make little alliances, trying to get what you can. I mean, we're in rank one right now, even though we're like the third strongest board. We're not going to be rank one at the end, but because we played the early game smart, we did get a lot more points than we might have otherwise. So it was fun. I'm looking forward to the next one. Maybe eventually we'll get stuck in a horde battle where we can actually win, but yeah, that wasn't in the cards for us this time. Hope you enjoy the video, and let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Thanks.